Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about uh, the idea that if we train hard enough, we do not need nearly as much volume. And, and what I find is that uh, the lifters who really struggle to train hard uh, on a set per set basis, these are the ones who do make the most gains from adding volume. Uh, and it does seem like though a lot of uh, evidence-based circles that try to push in that direction. Um, I think because a lot of them just due to personality type are just not willing to work that hard. Uh, again, just due to mindset, maybe, maybe upbringing, personality, or just again, an unwillingness to uh, become uncomfortable in the gym, okay? So they hold back a lot on, on individual sets and therefore they do need that volume. Um, and a lot of times guys will, will hear you say that. And again, I've had clients and other people who are like, but, but I do train hard. And then I watch them train and it's like, um, no, you don't, you don't train hard. All right. Just doing really slow negatives isn't training hard. And I've had guys who thought that because they do their negatives slow and then occasionally they just seem to give up on a set, right? Uh, they don't really reach failure with it or get that close that the bar speeds don't slow. They, you can't see them straining. They're just like, yeah, that's it, I was done. And, and it, you know, realistically, when you then make that lifter add more weight, do stuff really hard, uh, really focused, being aggressive with each rep, aggressive but controlled, I've had a case, I've literally had a client who, who tried to do that, you know, he had failed on lower volume training and I took his volumes up and uh, he was trying to do again, like bare minimum rock bottom, but he thought he was training hard. And I mean, a perfect example, um, you know, we took his, his dumbbell row and I had him add weight and then he gained five reps over what he had previously been able to do with me just coaching him. Now granted resistance coaching, but it was real time over, you know, over a video call. And all of a sudden he picked up five reps with five more kilos on the dumbbell over what he had previously been able to do while doing a longer range of motion. Same thing he had been feeling that, you know, the bench in his chest. And I made him actually do hard sets with pauses on the chest squeezing the bar then all of a sudden he's like oh wow now I'm, I'm getting all sorts of doms I'm getting sore and feeling things I didn't feel and I think that's a point that people need to remember they for some reason guy some guys get this weird idea that they think well if I just do negative slow that that's training hard and I've seen that a lot it's like uh, I think that's a bit over overhyped but when you watch them do a set, you don't see them struggling to stay tight. You know, again, they think training hard is, you know, once it gets a little hard, they just do a couple cheat reps, they get loose in their form. And because they did a couple more reps when it got harder, again, by doing cheat reps, they're like, I'm training hard. And I'm like, but I never saw you really strain. You know, and granted, there could be a time on stuff like deadlift reps, for example, where you can barely tell because it tends to move fairly slow. Like I've done all out maxes and people thought, oh man, that's, uh, <laughs> you, you, you could have done more. And I'm like, no, I really couldn't, you know, I was shaking. But I mean, again, watch, watch this deadlift set, right? And to reset every rep, notice I stay tight, I brace in that last rep, I'm struggling with it, you know, struggling with it. Right, that's training hard. Okay, if you want to get away with lower volumes, all your sets need to be like that. And I'm not saying you have to fail reps. I'm not saying you have to hit failure. I'm not saying you have to do forced reps or anything like that. I'm, I'm saying you better get really close to failure with good form. Okay, you need to be straining. Okay, you need to be straining. It needs to be difficult. But that's the thing, you know, you, you get lifters who they really and truly don't know how to strain. They've never actually pulled or pushed something in, in their life as hard as they possibly can, right? They've never done that. 
you know, maybe maybe just uh, the background they've had, they've never been required to do so. Maybe they're very cerebral people, they have desk jobs, they've never done any sports, they've never done anything particularly physical, other than lifting. So they don't, they truly don't know how to strain. And until they learn how to strain, those people are going to have to do higher volumes. They're, they're absolutely going to have to, because otherwise they're not going to make progress. And I think this is where you're seeing certain circles of people who they, they seem to promote it and they seem to do decent on it. You know, again, some of these experts, but then they think that that's a solution to everyone. But then you look at so many people who got phenomenal absolutely phenomenal gains doing way less than they prescribe but then you look at the difference in how they train right you look at the difference in how they train you know their sets are actually hard they're actually challenging right they're squeezing keeping good form staying oftentimes as tight as they can and then struggling with the last rep right struggling with it and, and I chose this video because every single uh, set in this particular one from, from this training week, uh, you know, was, was hard like that. Okay? They were hard sets. And that's what we're looking for. And again, it doesn't have to be crazy. You know, everyone, everyone has this idea that, oh, it's really hard to train that way, but it's really not. That's something that people tell themselves. They think it's hardcore. They think it's it's difficult. And I'm like, look, training hard and, and having some discomfort doesn't have to be this, this insurmountable task. It doesn't need to be this, this dreaded, dreaded thing that you do. You know, in fact, if you train hard enough, your workouts tend to be shorter anyways. You get in, you get it done, and then it's over, right? It's not like you have to sustain it because you can't sustain that for a long time. But you don't have to. It's not necessary. You know, and then it becomes enjoyable. You know, then it becomes like, let's see what I can do. Every set, instead of them being boring, becomes, let me see what I can do on this set. What am I capable of doing? Let's find out. Right? Instead of even saying, oh, I'm going to do this. No, 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 no. You don't know what you're going to do on that set. You're going to get what you're going to get. Come in and find out what you can do. Instead of, I have to get this, this is my target rep. So, well, okay, fine. But it's not going to create this the same effect I'm talking about. And you're not finding out what you can do. There's a, there's a certain fun in that. Let's see what I can do on this set. What am I capable of? All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.